You're not supposed to go to the green, but you've got to go in that last yellow. Don't go when it first comes on. You let it get good and bright and go. Time in the spectator lane, 13.04. Top speed of 106.25 miles per hour. There's a class race in Able Modified Production in the yellow Corvette. It's the yellow Corvette and a Plymouth. The Corvette is Terry Sherrell from Clemens Falls, Oregon. And in the street lane, it's Lauren Downing from Kearney, Nebraska. So we're looking at Oregon and Nebraska. Class race A modified production cars. Sports car versus a big passenger sedan. Starter Buster Couch stages them up. Both yellow lights are on. The countdown begins. Plymouth out in front of the Corvette by a couple of car lengths. Looks like he'll hold on with no problems. And he does. Elapsed time, 11.39. At the Winter Nationals, there are no second chances. The finest cars and the best amateur and professional drivers in the world have come here twin. Ronnie Sox, a top pro from North Carolina, is here with a new car, an untried car, a tough way to run an important race. Months of preparation have gone into the car, and so have the talents and energies of a hundred different people. But at the last minute, there's always something that needs doing, something that might give you that little extra edge, that few tenths of a second that means the difference between winning or losing. And 
on the line the MP Volkswagen, the most fantastic Volkswagen in the world as far as I'm concerned. second doesn't sound like much, but it is really a whole lot. But what do you do to get that few tenths of a second? There's a hundred things to try. You had time. Different tires, a new fuel mixture. Maybe lightening the car or trying a different suspension would do it. But in those frantic few moments between races, there's never enough time. And there's too many other things you have to do, things that don't make the car go faster. Putting on your suit, packing your parachute, any one of a hundred annoying but necessary things. Ronnie Sox will be in hundreds of races before the year is out, and each meet and each race seems more frantic than the last. But the Winter Nationals is the big one, one that drivers like Ron have waited and worked all year for. For the Dragon Lady, it is the big one. Shirley Shahan doesn't know it yet, but before this meet is over, her Hemi-powered Plymouth will carry her to the stock championship, the Winter Nationals. The Dragon Lady becomes the first woman ever to win the title, Top Eliminator. And right behind that pair comes the Sox and Martin car. Sox and Martin, a fabulous Florida. Injected 46 Plymouth Hemi, running in the Charlie Fuel Dragster class of all things. Lots of driver glass. Picture of a great big Becaruda right under the Sox and Martin name on the door. And Sox and Martin's competition is the Melrose Missile from San Francisco. Cecil, you're at the wheel. Both cars in the C fuel dragster class. Okay, they're staged and the lights are counting. Sox and Martin are run away in the street lane. He lost time of 9.84. Top speed of 152.80. After, after you move out two car lanes, he gets a real good bite. It's a big meet for these men, too. As factory representatives, they're here to see how the Plymouths are doing. They're all here because Plymouth has a new car, the Belvedere Satellite, with a 426 Hemi engine. They're going to arrange a series of tests between this new car and its chief competition. The National Hot Rod Association has agreed to supervise the tests and to supply four amateur drivers from one of its member clubs. Frank Maurer is one of the drivers. He's been in a few races, and he likes fast cars. But this is the one he drives. Dennis Mitchell builds cars as well as drives them. A lot of his spare time has gone into this one, but it's still got a long way to go before it's ready for the Win Nationals. Like the other drivers, Art Schicht is an amateur with some racing experience. He's also a custom car buff. This one is a prize winner. Our fourth driver, Jack Cunham, collects cars as well as drives them. Besides this Model A, he has three others. Fortunately, one of them runs. Well, fellas, you want to gather around here? We're going to have a little drop meeting. NHRA President Wally Parks briefs the boys before the tests begin. What we're here for. We've got our quarter mile course set up and we'll be running under normal uh, NHRA rule. Uh, Ronnie Sox will be out here as the pro representative to talk to you and give you some instructions on some of the finer points in big racing. 
that uh, you may or may not know about. Well, these cars are set up for normal street use. As you know, they've got tires on them here that will help okay. them in acceleration such as you can buy. But uh, we're driving typical vehicles here that you could buy from your dealer showroom and set up in that type of uh, condition. And uh, we're going to test just as equal as possible. Now, in order to maintain equality among you drivers out here, well, each one of you is going to have an opportunity to drive each one of the cars. So there won't be a relationship between how good one is and how bad the other might be. We'll find out if you're all good or all bad or in between. You fellas have been selected because uh, you've been associated with this thing and members of car clubs and know how they do it. And, uh, Good luck. Thank you. Four cars will participate. The Chevelle SS, the Ford Fairlane, the Pontiac GTO, and the Plymouth Satellite. Each of these is the hottest car available from the manufacturer in the medium size, medium price range. The cars are thoroughly inspected to make certain that they haven't been altered from stock specifications. 4139S and a 4140S Carter ASB. No modification. Wally Parks has set the ground rules. Now the boys take a few trial runs to get the feel of the cars. The pro racing team of Ronnie Sox and Buddy Martin are on hand to watch the boys and do some pointers that may help better their times. Ronnie's noticed that the boys are having some problems. Having a little shifting problem. Maybe I can give you a little help, okay? Okay. All right, I believe one of the main things is on the starting line, and pop the clutch pretty quick so it won't get the clutch hot. Yeah. Just concentrate real hard in coordination in the left leg and the right arm. The main thing. Mark a spot on your tag and try to shift the same for you at each gear. Right, maybe you want to try a run by yourself now and see if that helps some. Okay. That look much better. That thing to help about it on your ET, too. Felt a lot better. A lot better. Yeah. Good. Every little bit helps. Okay, heck. Well, Art, one of the main things, I've, I noticed you were a little overstaged on the starting. You just barely want to break the beam. It gives you a better run at the lights. That means you can move a little quicker on the lights than maybe the other guy can. Time for the tests. Two scores will be recorded for each car. First, the ET or elapsed time. This is the overall time needed to travel from the start to the finish line. And second, the top speed. That is the miles per hour of the car as it crosses the finish line. The Chevelle SS leads off. Lightweight with a big 396 cubic inch engine. This Chevy has one of the best weight to horsepower ratios in its class. Moore gets an ET of 14.96 with a top speed of 98.46 miles per hour. Uh, 
if I'd have gone, if I'd have popped it, it would have gone squirrelier than it already did. Mitchell takes the Chevy for its second run down the track. Point twenty two. Thanks a lot. That's a bit faster than Maurer's run. Let's see how she does. An ET of thirteen point nine eight and a top speed of one hundred and one point sixty nine. That'll be the Chevy's best run today. After Cunningham's run, the ETs and top speeds for all four drivers are averaged, and a composite score is posted. Now the second car will make its runs. Ford has one of the best known overall racing images in the world. Let's see how the Fairlane does. Ford averages 15.39 T and 92.55 miles per hour. We've reached the halfway point in the test now, and the boys have a competition going among themselves for the lowest ET. They'll take their turns with the Pontiac GTO next. I tell you, I didn't wind it up in third gear. I know that. <laughs> Called the Tiger of the Streets, the GTO has earned a reputation for being one of the hottest cars going. 1468, 100.33. Where'd you come out at? Four. Frank, what'd you come out at? Four. Four grand? Four grand. Play a little. You come out of? Pretty sure. Four, I think. I wasn't oh, sure, really. On. I was doing mostly this. Four hundred. Four thousand. You took it out. Hey, that way. The <laughs> collector. Composite scores are posted. ET 14.43 and top speed 99.56. Quick, but Chevy still leads. The next car to make its runs is the Plymouth Satellite. The 426 Hemi is a new car, not as well known as the others. Let's see what it can do. ET of 14.08 and a miles per hour of 104.28. That's gonna be hard to beat. Hard to beat. Now Mitchell takes the wheel. I know that, but take it out of three. 
Mitchell gets an ET of 14.30 and a top speed of 103.56 miles per hour. Schicht has a go at it next. Schicht will get an ET of 13.84 and a top speed of 103.44, his best time of the day. Now watch Cunningham. He hasn't been doing as well as he'd like. runs away from them all with an average ET of 14.00 and a top speed of 103.98 miles per hour. Not bad for a showroom car with only one modification, no hubcaps. But what happens when the cars are tested at speeds more likely to be driven by the average driver? Let's watch the 2080 punch. In this test, the cars will oach the flagman at 20 miles per hour. When he sees that they are properly aligned, he'll signal them to start. The timing lights at the end of the track will record the first car to hit 80 miles per hour. wins. The difference between winning and losing is often a mere fraction of a second. And the difference between a good driver and a great driver is also a fraction of a second. It takes concentration, coordination, and split-second timing to be a pro. Ronnie Sox is a real pro. Let's see what time he turns in the Hemi. Elapsed time, 13.29. Top speed, 107.91. That betters the fastest run of the day over five-tenths of a second and 3.26 miles per hour, more than five coins. But Ronnie would tell you that he thinks he can do just a little bit better, and trying to do better is what drag racing is all about. People trying to build a better car, Drivers trying anything to get that little extra button. Why do they do it? Ask Ronnie Sox. Why? In the blood, I reckon. Have it. 